So on today's video, I'm gonna show you a small snippet of a consultation talking about raising layers for business. We'll go over different numbers, ways of running the chickens, just some ideas that I thought might be useful for you. This is part of an hour and 20 minute tour and consultation video that I made for From the Field, Curtis Stone's private site that I also make content for. So if you would like to see that, I have a link down in the description where you can sign up for From the Field and go enjoy a lot of the amazing content that is on there from many other fantastic farmers and creators. So let's get into the video today with Bruce, a little bit about raising layers for homestead or business. Okay, so now we're with your, your uh, layers here. Tell us a bit about what's your experience been with layers this first year. Tell us a bit about your, your um, buildings that you're using to keep them and everything. Yeah, so uh, layers were the first thing that I got. Um, started off with 12 and then really didn't know what I was gonna put them in. Did some emergency, just, you know, what I thought was going to be good for coops. And then once they got here, found out that I wanted to get into rotational grazing and move them onto our pasture. So I uh, started off with the Suskovich mm -hmm. tractor, um, put the, had meat birds in it, and then later put the layers in it. And then eventually moved on to a chickshaw that I got from Justin Rhodes. And then moved those all around. I've actually moved them over to the neighbor's property to help with pest control. When they had an army worm infestation, they called over, asked for it, and they did great control on that. And then here recently moved them over to a more, like I think it's called a Millennium Feather Net mm -hmm. that uh, Joe Salatin does. And with that, I got a roll away nest box um, and I've allowed them to free range more. So just playing with different designs, seeing what works here as far as area to keep them in before I rotate them and how it's moved, because I have kind of uneven terrain, which can bring problems with the Chickshaw and then the Suskovich tractor. So still a work in progress. And Yeah, so how are you dealing with the slope here when, with the chickens? How do you get them up there? With the Shaw, I'm using cement blocks and other things to kind of keep the, the Shaw level. Yeah which can just be a pain lugging all that around. Um, another option I'm gonna think of is adding more netting, yeah. creating the paddock a little bit larger um, so that I'm moving them less, kind of keeping maybe the, the uh, coop where it's flat, yeah. do a deep bedding underneath. Mm. And then, so I'm just kind of moving them down, up and down the pasture. Um, so I have a home base here that you can kind of tie the nest into, to like, so like going up this right. this strip, and it would they still have access to that. Yep. And then, yeah, then you just move the net over, the net. still give them a space to get back. Slide the house down to that yeah. next strip. Right. And maybe I can get maybe three to four, maybe or more, yeah. larger paddocks. I uh, yeah, I think that's a great way to deal with it, and it makes it easier on you. They can still graze this whole, right. you know, thing. Because what is this in here? Like one. It's, just, it's gonna be about an acre. Have you figured out like your feed cost or like your feed ratio? Like how much each bird's eating? And... I was doing one third a pound uh -huh. um, per chicken per day, and then I switched over to the 25, 26 pound Premier One, just kind of um, free choice. Yeah. And I'm filling those up about once a week because okay. um, we have the compost pile that they kind of come in and out of which that has you know spent hay horse manure um, you know I go to a, a local restaurant and I pick up food scraps oh, cool. which I've been adding into there cool. just playing around with that right. so that's the uh oh, his name Vermont compost guy yeah yeah <laughs> so the next thing I guess would be have you um how many chickens do you want to get so that for this next year to ramp up and then, you know, we can figure out like the cost of, so figure out your, you know, what you should do is really figure out what's your, what's your basic cost and then right. what, you know, five, six, seven dollars a dozen and then what's your. So right now I have probably five to six uh, different families that come by, come by the um, house and pick up eggs. And it, it's kind of like a weird in between where I don't have, I can sell out really fast, but I don't know if I'm, I feel comfortable getting 100, 200 layers yet. Um, but I think that would probably be 
where I would start would maybe 100 to 200 and go from there. So let's just figure this out just for the math yeah. of it, okay? Just for, let's say, let's do 100 because it's an easy number. Yeah. Let's say you got 100 layers. Um, let's say they lay 300 eggs a year. So that'd be 30,000 eggs a year divided by 12. So 2,500 dozen eggs a year. Um, let's just say you can only get $5 a dozen. Mm -hmm. So $12,500. So you can get all the way up to seven, which Forest Fed Farm is getting. Mm -hmm. um, that's, set, that's another $5,000 a year, um, charging that extra $2 a dozen. Yeah. So that's huge. Now, you gotta find that right customer right. that's willing to pay that price, but they are getting a truly free range and only organic fed and a soy free fed right. uh, chicken. So, I mean, it's, it's the ultimate kind of quality. Right. Um, so I guess, but you know, don't rely upon, I'm definitely getting that $7. Yeah. Know that it might be somewhere in that range. And, and I think I'm even using the eggs as a foot in the door. I mm. think that seems to be the, yeah. the easiest thing to get people to. To now of, say, hey, I've also got chicken mm -hmm. uh, broilers for sale. I've also got this veggie. Yeah. Cause, Cause that's kind of opened the door to those conversations uh -huh. where we did process a, a hundred which I did for personal use, mm -hmm. but I've had those families, hey, do, you know, are you selling any of those? Or I'm like, well, not at the moment, but in the future, yeah. Oh, well, let's figure something else out. So then how many, it was 2,500 dozen? Yep. Let's divide that by 52 weeks a year. So that would be 48 dozen a week is what you would, that's how many eggs you'd be selling. If they're like at that peak 300 uh, eggs a year production. Right. So 48 a dozen, 48 dozen, that's like 30 families maybe, because a bunch of the families would get yeah. at least two dozen. Right. So maybe 25 families a week with eggs would be a hundred layers. Finding a hundred or uh, 25 families. Yeah. Which yeah. does that sound, that's reasonable. Oh yeah. And your, for, and your next year, I think that's a reasonable number you could do, get 25 families. That's exactly what I And that's 25 for. families that could buy other things that you want to buy too. So I think for this next year, that's a, that's a good target, something yeah. around that. And then, yeah, seeing how much do you like dealing with the eggs and now do I want to scale from 100 to 500 right. next year and, and we're going to go to the 100 acre farm over here and mm -hmm. do it there and, you know, this next year will tell you, is the market there? Do I enjoy this enough? Right. All that stuff. So.